Hello everybody. Let's try and find a sufficient statistic for the rate of the Poisson distribution. So to be going with, um, let's think about how this data is being generated. So what we have is x1 up to xn distributed iid um, from the Poisson distribution. And, and we're going to call the rate parameter here theta. So what we want is a function of our data here. And so we're going to call that function t. So t is a function of all of our data. And t is going to be our sufficient statistic. And so a sufficient st uh, statistic for a parameter is a statistic that exhausts all the possible information um, from the data about that parameter. So in different words, um, a sufficient statistic has just as much information about the parameter as does the entire data set. So it's not any better to have every x1 through xn if you have your sufficient statistic um, t. Um, so just for um, clear notation, we're going to write our data x1 through xn just as x with um, an arrow on top, on top of it, just like this. So, okay. The first thing we need to do to find our sufficient st uh, statistic is to write down the likelihood function um, for all of our ob observations. So that's the likelihood of theta given our data is uh, the, pr the product from i equals one to n of theta to the xi e to the minus theta over xi factorial. So this here is just the PMF of the Poisson. Um, and we're taking the product of all of them um, because our data here are iid. OK. So let's copy this and bring it over here onto the next page. So the way we find a sufficient statistic with the like creative function is we need to do this. We'll, we need to factor it into two functions, g, which is a function of our sufficient statistic and theta, our parameter, times a function h, which is, which is just a function of our data. And so if we can factor it in this way, then we know that this function here, t, is, is, is going to be a sufficient statistic for our parameter theta. Um, so let's see if we can achieve this, fact this factorization. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, help separate out this part here. So I can write this as the product from i equals 1 to n of 1 over xi factorial times. And then now let's think about what happens to this part here. So we're taking the product of, of a bunch of theta to, of theta to the xi. Well, from our exponent laws, that's just going to be theta to the sum of the xi. And then because um, this part here doesn't depend on, on um, i, um, that just becomes e to the minus n times theta, because we're multiplying um, uh, uh, we're multiplying of those uh, together. Um, so now what we see is that we have two parts here. So this is a function of only our data, 
because it's only a function of the xi. Um, so I'm going to call this our age. Um, and then this here is a function of our parameters, um, uh, but also a statistic t of x, which we see is the sum of the xi. Uh, so I'm going to call this our g, and then we're going to say that our t is the sum of the xi. So we've proven that the sum of the xi is a sufficient statistic for theta. So this means that if you collect data that is um, iid Poisson, knowing the sum of all those data t um, tells you just as much info about theta as if you had the values of every individual data point. So the neat thing about the factorization theorem is it lets you prove that a certain statistic is sufficient, but just by factoring it like we did here, it lets you discover a sufficient st um, statistic. So we, did, we didn't come into this problem um, t testing if the sum of the xi is sufficient. We factored it and that's kind of what popped out. So it's a very neat theorem that lets us discover sufficient statistics.